On the Royal Princess, one of the biggest luxury cruise ships in the world. Beautiful. Makes you wonder how to keep afloat. <laughs> it's all aboard for the start of the busy summer season cruising the Mediterranean. Unfortunately, the trolley actually fell with other bags into the water. For three and a half thousand passengers, this is unbelievable, this is. It's the trip of a lifetime. You're in a real five-star luxury bubble here, really. Upstairs, a chance to relax and celebrate. David, you may kiss your bride. Our policy here is never say no. Fruit tart, chocolate. Let's go. While downstairs, 1,400 staff work round the clock to meet the highest standards. That is unacceptable. $2,000 for a cruise, and that's what we give them. And deal with the daily dramas of life aboard. 911, medical emergency. Just a half a billion euro ship and 25 year old blonde. What could possibly go wrong? Tonight, Santorini. New junior officer on the bridge, Lauren, has got a big challenge on her hands. So we're just waiting for the orders and then we're going to drop the anchor. It's going to get very loud, it's going to get very noisy. Hotel services engineer Scott draws the short straw with one of the dirtiest jobs on the ship. After a month, you can only imagine how much poo comes down here. There's and over that's... 30 bags lost on that one flight. Yeah. And with front desk at full stretch... There's nothing. Timothy has his work cut out. Let me get upset. Come on. I'm really sorry. In Athens, the royal princess is about to embark on her five-month summer season around the Mediterranean. Each week, she'll be joined by thousands of new passengers. So, is it your first time cruising with us? First time. First one. Ah, oh, brilliant. Time. They'll pay an average of almost £1,000 each to sail from Greece to the French Riviera. Every department is working flat out to prepare for departure. How's it going, guys? Okay? And in housekeeping, it's a race against the clock to make up the beds in almost 1,800 cabins. I'm putting their goodnight chocolate, one each, so they don't fight. <laughs> there is 65 passengers outstanding. I think we'll be safe enough to just start everything going according to. Embarkation is always stressful on the bridge, and Captain Bob Oliver is keeping a close watch for any stragglers. You always get those who cut it a bit fine. You may get those who go to the wrong ship, even. All part of the entertainment up here. And there's not traffic inbound as yet. OK, so happy to go. It's a beautiful morning. To the right of track, as per plan, looking good. Their first stop is Santorini, one of Greece's most popular islands, famed for its unique volcanic landscape. Conditions are absolutely perfect. Champagne and chocolate. Who doesn't like cruising? <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. Happy anniversary for tomorrow. Yes. In Riviera 616, cruise addict school secretary Sue and husband Rick have pushed the boat out and spent almost £3,000 on a luxury suite. It was a recommendation from a friend and we were considering a trip for our 25th wedding anniversary. Tomorrow, my husband and I celebrate our 41st wedding anniversary, so we've been cruising for that long. This is nice. Fantastic. What? Nice I... outside. I don't think we drink champagne at home, do we? While unwinding in luxury is on the agenda for some passengers... Hi, have you had a passenger vomit in one of the sinks in Horizon Court? So if we can send someone up to have that cleaned. Thank you. Bye. For the crew on front desk, things are proving a little less relaxing. Passenger services, Timothy speaking. We'll have someone go right up. And today, there's a big problem for Timothy. Delivering 5,000 bags to 1,300 cabins is a huge logistical challenge. Deck seven at the forward, OK? And when things go wrong, there's one man firmly in the firing line. Hello. How are you? Oh, not good. Our luggage is in Amsterdam when oh, we are on the ship. No. So. Yikes. Here, how many bags was it? Four suitcases. Out of four? Nothing. We've got what we've got on us just now. That's yeah. all. We have nothing. Wow. This was meant to be 
my dad passed away a year ago, so this oh, is my sorry. mum's coming up to his anniversary. So I went to yeah. my mum away to get away from everything yeah. and no keep anybody's your mind and off it's of been it. stressful yeah. from start to finish. So. You're gonna have to keep um, a positive outlook. There's already 31 passengers that we filed lost luggage for. They seem in good spirits. They're they're joking about and stuff. The grandmother just went for a cigarette, so she might be better now. <laughs> The airlines may have lost the luggage, but the painful task of getting it back falls to Timothy. Timothy's charm has bought some valuable time for now, but how long will their patience last? Oh, Downstairs in the bowels of the ship. Yeah, if you all want to come in, guys. Hotel services engineer Scott is about to face his own deluge of jobs. Come in, come in, come in. OK. Is that everyone? So, first thing, deck 15, Lido Galley leak. If anything is blocked, broken or in need of a refit... Uh, the fountain, you're going to do the inspection. It's his and his team's job to fix it. Entertainment flags, are they done now or in progress? Happy days, cross that off. And with a ship the size of a small town that has everything from a spa to a casino... <laughs> Gone up slightly from when you first come in. ..to a state-of-the-art medical centre, keeping it all running smoothly... We'll do for number two. ..is a huge challenge. OK, I see you guys there. It's kind of like opening the lid on a beehive. I know how I want to do it. If you don't control them, they're off. Where's your badge? Hello, okay. Tomorrow morning. With almost 5,000 people on board this cruise, there will be an avalanche of jobs heading his way. Morning, mate. All right. <laughs> Where's the important cupboard? Every bridge has got a cupboard. Up on the bridge is rookie officer Lauren. She's never been on a ship this size before. Where's the...? <laughs> I found the manuals. I'm going to be spending a lot of time up here learning stuff. Before the captain will allow her to take the helm... Breathe. ..she'll have to pass a series of tests. It was like driving a car. You won't really learn until you pass a test. I knew it was going to be different, but this is... Colleague James will be keeping a watchful eye on her progress. Oh, my God, there's more. If something goes wrong on the ship, you have to remember that you've got 300-odd metres behind you and you've got 3,500 people who are relying on you to keep them safe when we're out at sea. The stakes are high. Within weeks, 25-year-old Lauren could be taking charge of the ship's controls. All right, I got this. I totally got this. Back on deck 14... So we'll start to bring the detail. Yes, yes, yes thank please, you. thank you. The only thing Sue and husband Rick are taking charge of is their afternoon tea. So we have scones and cakes and assorted sandwiches. Oh, look and at that. Biscuits. Delicious. Beautiful. To us, it's the only way to travel. We've worked full time all our life. This is the reward of working on. And that's why they call them the golden years. Relax and enjoy it. Cruises to the end. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Happy high tea. Thank you. <laughs> Sue and Rick aren't the only ones enjoying the food. Over half of passengers put on an average of a pound a day whilst aboard. Smell it already. But what goes in has to come out. Getting close. And it's Scott's job to deal with what appears at the other end. Poo. People's poo. Thousands and thousands of people. It's like the M1 for human poo. This one's probably the dirtiest of them all. Every month, Scott has the joyous task of inspecting and cleaning the filters of the ship's 3,000 vacuum toilets. I don't like the look of that, though. Your toilet back home, it's basically working on gravity when you flush the loo. On here, it's like, it's like a vacuum, kind of similar to what you get on a plane. Oh, that's hot. When you're on the toilet, I would advise don't, don't sit down and push flush, cos you might get sucked in. <laughs> See, this is what I don't like. So every one of these lines here 
represents a deck. And each deck will probably have about 50 to 80 toilets that it's running. Time is of the essence, and there's only a small window to get the job done, or 1,000 of the ship's toilets will no okay. longer flush. So that's now the suction going to number one. To do the maintenance, we have to cross-connect the system. So number one now is doing basically all of this times two. So it's under a lot of pressure. We have a maximum time of about 15 minutes to get vacuum back. So this is the air filter. It's like hard, raw crap. It's delicious. We've got early signs of uh, damage here on this lobe. I think, I think we should change it, mate. You never know what you're going to find. I've had half a chicken. <laughs> what? All sorts. If you want to get it done tonight, it's tonight's curry night. Jobs are good. I would bump fists or shake hands here, but I'm done. <laughs> Scott may have maintained the pressure downstairs. And is there no one higher up that can do this as a priority? But upstairs, it's definitely still rising. I can put you through on the phone if you want to speak to someone, but it's going to still be the same answer. They haven't been located yet. I don't know what to do. I don't know either. On front desk, the lost bag situation is now critical and the passengers are threatening drastic action. Right. So, can we arrange to get a flight home then? If you are, I mean... There's no point in us being on the ship with, with nothing. There's... so... No, I know. Mm -hmm. Completely. Really, yeah. I'm really sorry. And you're not going to flight from Santorini to Scotland. There's no very flight. All Timothy can do now is hope the luggage arrives in Santorini before the ship leaves for the next port. <sighs> right, come on. Then they get upset, come on. Royal Princess is approaching the Greek island of Santorini. And today is new bridge officer Lauren's first real test. Right, Santorini. A little bit like doing revision for an exam. Yeah, I need to make sure I've got it all down. <laughs> She's helping colleague James to drop anchor, a job that demands absolute precision. At the moment, it's looking a little bit breezy out there, so we'll have to keep an eye out on it. The island was created by a violent volcanic eruption, which formed a narrow lagoon. She's taken out of gear and she's now holding on the brake. So as soon as we open that brake, she'll drop. Making Santorini a tough navigational challenge. We're in a fairly confined area here. Although the water is deep, we could quite easily end up dragging ourselves onto an island, onto the shore side, or into dangerous waters. So you need to be really careful when you're doing it that you've got it spot on as best as you can. Just getting there now, Also, if you've not slowed the ship down correctly, you could end up with the anchor actually hitting the ship's side as you're lowering it, which could do damage to the hull. So we're just waiting for the orders, and then we're going to drop the anchor. It's going to get very loud, it's going to get very noisy. Bridge, folks, we're standing by to drop. Hey, anchor, let go. Let go. The anchor is attached to a chain that is as long as the ship and weighs over 80 tons. Well done. It's not a bad job when you wake up in the morning and you're in Santorini. <laughs> Paid to do it as well. With a successful anchor drop, Lauren's making good progress. Downstairs in the ship's galley, there's someone else keen to move up the ranks. Go splash the water on the machine as well. Galley assistant Nico is one of a 300-strong team who have to prepare 20,000 meals a day. Oh my gosh, this is the most dirtiest part of the galley. Leaving his family in the Philippines behind, he works every day for nine months on Royal Princess. We all work hard because we are all breadwinners of the family. <laughs> no one cares for me, but now it's If you're singing and while cleaning, it means like you're not getting tired. But he harbors ambitions for another job with more money and a bigger cabin. I don't want to be stuck here at the kitchen. I want to expand my learning at the front desk, at the hospitality management. That is my goal. Until then, the hard work in the galley continues. Back to being Cinderella. 
Nico dreams of having the chance to work on front desk. So it's Gardner. But upstairs, Timothy is finding it tough. Aloha 430. He's been anxiously waiting for news about the missing luggage. AMS. Oh my goodness. My bags have arrived. Let's see how happy they are. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> That's quite the reaction. <laughs> the gardeners won't be going home after all. Timothy has managed to save the day. Still no underwear, but at least we've got formal wear. Right? No knickers, but you get the rest. I've got a dress for fun. <laughs> and that's my mum's case. So yeah, it is, great. yeah. Thank you. I really love when my shit ends like this, because I can go and just relax, and I know that they've been taken care of. Crisis averted upstairs, down in the galley. Nico's hoping to make a bold move. I'm gonna tell to the chef because I saw there's an opening for a customer service for assistant. So I asked, I will ask chef. I'm so excited. Maybe he will allow me or he will help me to talk to the, to the director if he's gonna allow me to apply for a customer service. But it all hinges on whether executive chef David McDonald will support his bid. And he's not a man to mince his words. Chef. Hello, Nico. What can I do for you? Chef, I have, um, I have something to tell you. You're not pregnant, are you? <laughs> right? I'm nine months pregnant. No! <laughs> Come sit down. Let's have a seat. Let's have a, let's have a chat. I want to be in a customer service agent, chefs. I don't want to only to stay at the galley. I want to explore. I want to learn more. Why don't you grow in the galley? I love galley, chef, but I, I want to learn different, chef. Yeah? Yeah, chef. So I'm going to run short in my department. How does that make you feel? Oh, you make me happy, chef. No, I mean, what do you mean I'll make you happy? <laughs> Your happiness is my sadness, because you're not going to be with me. Oh, no, I can visit you here, chef. No, I don't want you to visit me. I want you to work for me. Oh. <laughs> Uh, okay, Nico, you know what? Uh, I'm not going to start with your career because you obviously are a people's person and I, uh, I appreciate that, you know, and I want to see you grow. You get your CV in order. Well, we're going to have to send it to the hotel director and then they will take it from there and let me know. You're going to have to be a trainee on the desk. You do know that, eh? Yeah, chef. Okay, thank you. While Nico's planning his escape route from the galley, Timothy and Scott are escaping the ship altogether. Have you ever been here? No. No? Check this out. I love this place. I've been to Greece once before when I was a kid, yeah. but uh, I can't really remember that well. The upside of all the hard work on board... It's amazing up there. ...is your downtime is in some of the world's most sought-after locations. So we got to go up that big thing? Yeah, yeah, we're going to cross up and, like, go, like, all the way up there on a donkey. <laughs> How do you drive it? Just drive it? Ride it, ride, ride it. it. How do you ride it? Do you grab it to you? Um, <laughs> Do you laugh? Do you reckon it'll understand you? I'm kind of scared, like they might think I'm one of them. With 600 steps up to the nearest town, it's a steep climb without the help of a four-legged friend. I'll tell you what, I picture donkeys being a little smaller than this leg. See, his legs are buckling already. Let's go, buddy. I'm going to call my donkey the White Warrior. This isn't a donkey. It's a mule. Come on, white warrior! <laughs> I literally have no control of this animal. Can we stop him? While staff and passengers enjoy the charms of Santorini, one department aboard is on high alert. 911 medical emergency. Can I have your name and location? Just lift your tongue, but thank you. On a day like Santorini, it's a very hot day. People go out, have fun, so they will try most things that they may not try when they're at home. And so, you know, you, you tend to get a few surprises sometimes every now and again. So, yeah, it's all part of the, part of the fun. We didn't know you were allergic to any animals, right? 25-year-old William has come back to the ship with his mother and brother and is having some emergency treatment. Um, hi, my name's Dr. Belton. Hi, I'll shake this hand, right. shall I? <laughs> so tell me what happened. OK, so I was riding a, a donkey down. I got a, a rash on both sides of my okay. legs where I was touching it, and yeah. I just started coughing and spitting stuff up. And... All right. All right, let's have a listen to your lungs. Deep breath in and out. 
Uh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, you've got quite a wheeze still. What I'm going to get them to do is to give you a little bit of steroid into the veins. Okay. okay. That is just going to really stamp on this allergic response that your body is having at the moment. Okay. So just get your relaxed yeah. arm as much as possible. And we've not had any exposure to donkeys before. <laughs> <laughs> no, not yet. You will hear a lot of this from now on. The donkey man. Donkey man! <laughs> While Dr. Dylan and his team do all they can to restore William... Well, now you have a donkey allergy as well. Scott and Timothy have reached the summit. I'll tell you what, that is a mission coming up there. Like, that was amazing. After being in the poo, it's nice to, to get off. <laughs> it's a nice release. <laughs> all the donkey's ears just perked up there. It's a mating call. Oh, my goodness. Absolutely class view. Could you imagine living like here? Ah, oh. I am due a beer. You've got to make the most of the views while you can in this job. Chin chin. It's nice to get off the ship, mate. Especially when the next shift starts in an hour. You were covered in poo. Head to tour, mate. Next time, there's a wedding on board, but unexpected weather could drown out proceedings. Oh, God. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Absolutely unbelievable. Choppy seas spell danger for the ship's magicians. The top of the sword is about eight foot high, so if I fall head headways, I could actually break my neck. And on the bridge, it's all hands on deck for an emergency. We don't know how long it's been there, but there's no signs of life on board. Oh.